Right now, there's a lot of critique around Next.js. A lot of people are talking about moving on from Next.js to other frameworks. So in this video, I want to cover the Next.js situation, if it's as bad as it sounds, and if you should also consider moving away from it. Now, obviously, you have heard about the vulnerability from last week. Next.js has had a huge vulnerability in their code affecting thousands if not millions of applications and this allowed to potential hackers to basically bypass authorization and authentication now they have addressed the situation and they have also published patches so you should just update your next.js projects to be on the safe side and of course having a vulnerability is something that happens in all major frameworks but i think that the way that they have handled this one is not optimal if you just take a look at the timeline, you're going to see that this vulnerability have been reported almost a month ago. And by the time that they have fixed all the versions of Next.js that are still supported, it has been a month. And I think that is not a good sign. But to be honest with you, I think that this vulnerability is just the tip of the iceberg. I am a Next.js user myself and my website runs on Next.js. And there are four major problems that I personally have experienced with Next.js. And I'm sure if you've worked with Next.js before, you can relate to these. So the first one is the developer experience. Next.js, generally speaking, does feel like a black box. Like when you're working on it, it feels like if you are not on the website and reading documentation, it's as if you're missing something. And that's something that you don't always get to experience with other uh, libraries and frameworks. So in the pages router, for example, you have the methods get static props and get static paths, which are functions that you export to tell Next.js about the static URLs in your application. Now, the thing is, this is just a normal export that you have next to your React component. And if you don't read it in the documentation, there is basically no way of finding it out, which means that you should always have documentation open on the side and the same goes for example for defining the metadata now if you had a function that you would import from next.js like define page or something like that that takes multiple arguments like metadata or static props then it would be easy for a developer to just control click on it and read the comments and the documentation of that function then we have to address the elephant in the room which is caching caching in next.js I don't know why, but it's a huge topic and it's just a constant pain. I have had so many times where I just had some UI that was not updating for the user and I just had to somehow find where the caching is happening on there are four types of caching built in and how to invalidate that type of caching. And honestly, caching should be something that enables you as a developer and also just augments the quality of your software for the user but it feels like it comes with a lot of challenges and really takes a while to actually understand how it works. Now, looking at this picture, you probably get PTSD. Uh, the hydration errors in Next.js are a real thing. And I think that they have improved a lot in the last update, but it has always been a challenge to figure out what was the reason behind this. And it was funny that sometimes the reason behind this was having a Chrome extension that somehow messed up with the web page. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then there is the topic of blurring the lines between Next.js and other technologies. You don't know where Next.js stops and where other technologies start. And you can see this in multiple places, for example, in the fetch function where they have extended it to include a cache option, but also when it comes to server components, especially in the beginning where I was still wrapping my head around server components, it was really hard to split between React and Next.js and it just seems like they were melting together and I could not understand is this part of Next.js or React. Another thing to consider with Next.js is the constant change, which is something that directly affects the developers and being a bleeding edge technology, always following the latest React.js updates and versions means that you always have to deal with new concepts and that can seriously lead to developer fatigue. With each update, I have the feeling that there is a new pattern, a new correct way of doing things. And I think on the long term, that just ends up overwhelming the developers 
there's a great video by Aaron Francis talking about this topic, especially regarding to React. I'm gonna link to it. You should definitely check it out. Now, one last crucial point that you have to consider is, of course, the landscape of React.js. You probably know where I'm going with this, but there are some great alternatives to Next.js right now that simply did not exist before. Tanstack Start is looking really promising. If you have used any Tanstack library like Tanstack Router, which is for routing in React, Tanstack Form for handling forms in React, and of course Tanstack Query, then you definitely know how developer friendly they are and how easy it is to create great products with little effort. And I think that's what a framework should all be about basically enabling you as a developer. Now I'm working on a YouTube tutorial on how to work with Tanstack Start. If that's something that's interesting for you, then definitely make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching the video and see you in the next one.